friends, denizens of the internet, hello and welcome to a thousandth upload extravaganza episode today. I'm Devo. We are uh, we are kicking off something a little special today for my thousandth upload to the channel. Now, technically, this will be the one thousandth and one because uh, I had one uh, IRL video log, but that doesn't count. That wasn't game based. That was just a uh, a fifteen like a thirty second video. So, this is our thousandth gaming video upload to the channel and today we're doing Kerbal Space Program with the intent of going to the moon oh I'm sorry I mean uh mun and to do that we're uh we're not gonna get too hardcore into Kerbal Space Program here which is totally an option uh I'm not a physicist I have a moderate grasp of how basic physics works uh that being said, I took physics in high school, and that's about the limitations of my knowledge. Now, what Kerbal Space Program is, if you weren't aware, or you just don't know what the word space means, is uh, you have little Kerbals, and you launch them into space. Now, that seems pretty straightforward, but trust me when I tell you uh, it, is, it is not that straightforward. Oh, it's been so long, I don't even remember what the controls are. Oh, that's terrible. Wait, what are the controls? I think I have to, maybe I have to put something first. So we'll put a command pod. Good, yes. Oh, we can, wait, what? Oh, hold. Okay, so middle mouse button, scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. So, we're going for the mun. Uh, I like to call it the moon, but in this universe, it's called the mun. Because, um, let's see if we can actually, you know what, here, let's do something simpler first. Let's just go, let's just go to the launch pad and we'll throw together a sample, uh, kind of rocket here. Okay, can I not do that? Oh, I can't, I can't do that. No, that's unfortunate. I thought maybe I could just throw together a uh, a rocket. Well, I can. I just I thought I could do it from the uh, the launch pad itself. So let's open. There we go. I think we have like a small, a tiny rocket. No. No, I, I oh, the James Webb Telescope. Oh yeah, uh, the huge thing about this game is the modding community. And I, uh, while I've never tasseled with the mods myself, I've seen uh, people play mods that uh, really add a lot of like true to life science, or as as close as you can get to true to life science to the game. And uh, it's really quite amazing what some people have done with Kerbal Space Program. Now, one thing I'm not going to get into here, uh, because I just don't have the qualifications or the, the knowledge, is that there's all kinds of uh, hoo-ha, let's say, about the behind-the-scenes of Kerbal. Um, the game, you know, obviously was a very independent game. And it was made as such, uh, but eventually, at some point, it was uh, no longer a independent game. And uh, supposed to say, people felt some sort of way about that, which I can totally understand. And there's a lot of back and forth between the modding community and the people who now own the intellectual property of Kerbal Space Program. And uh, again, I'm just, I'm not knowledgeable enough to say one way or the other. Um, you know, what's what's right and wrong, just because I just don't know. There we go. Parachute. Okay. That's it. That's it. We've made a rocket. We're going to shoot it into space. Now, I say shoot it into space, but this tiny single-stage rocket will almost certainly not uh, make it into space. <laughs> we're going to throttle up. We're going to turn things on, and we're going to hit the button. Yep. About 300 meters per second. Well, we've broken the sound barrier. And that's Mach 2. And that's about all we got. So, as you can see, this is a, this is a rocket. We're flying about 500 meters per second. We're in altitude. We've probably uh, blown past 10,000 meters right now. You can see the little launch pad we were just at just fading into the back. 
And the who's we got? We got Jebediah Kerman here, uh, hanging out in the pilot seat. And just for funsies, because this is kind of a test flight, we're gonna have uh, Jebediah hop out on EVA here. Oh no! Cannot disembark while off Kerman's service. Oh what? I haven't. Uh, one of my favorite things to do was uh, pilot a, a spacecraft into the upper atmo, and then realize like, yeah, I'm bored with this. Let's just uh. Let's just have our, our our astronaut jump out, you know, into space. My original save file for Kerbal Space Program has about a half dozen Kerbins um, floating around the sun at 10,000 meters per second. It's pretty hilarious. But that's about as fast as we're going to get. We're now descending. Oh, yeah. We're going there, baby. Let's see if we can flip us upside down here. No, that's not really what we want to do because we do have a parachute. Which I was going to say should uh, deploy at some point. I don't know. Can I actually speed this up? Time warp. Oh, okay. Don't show that again. I get it. Sorry, right, triple, triple time speed here. Once this gets close enough to the ground, this parachute will open. Oh, shoot destroyed by aero forces and heat. That's unfortunate. That means we're going to come in hot. And Jebediah died. Okay, well, that's great. All right, well, um, to the Space Center. <laughs> um, and again, we're doing this just as a kind of, uh, as a kind of extravaganza for uploading a thousand videos. I'm not going to be doing a full playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. One, mostly because a lot more knowledgeable people have done way cooler things than I'm going to be doing with this game. Uh, my goal, or my main thing to do when I come into Kerbal Space Program is I usually like to build a medium to large size rocket and shoot it into space. Wait, why do I not have enough funds? This is sandbox. How do, how do you limit my funds in sandbox mode? Hold on, let me let me figure out what's going on here. Uh, okay, so I uh, apparently I loaded into an older save file of where I was doing the career or sciences mode. I'm not sure. Uh, this game does have several different modes. We're obviously going to be using sandbox here, but there's also a career mode where you can manage the funding and administrative sides. And there's also science mode where you kind of try and do research about in, about in this space there. So what we want is we want the Mark 1 through 3 command pod. We need the big old man. There we go. Drone core? No, we don't need any of that. And now, normally I would try and build like a, a Mun lander to land us on Mun, but I'll be happy if we can just crash directly into it. That would be... That would be fine for me. So what we're going to need for a trip to the moon... We're going to need fuel. Big giant rockets, apparently. And, uh... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Fuel and big giant rockets. There's not... There's not a whole heck of a lot more to it than that, but what we will need is a space engine and a getting to space engine. So we're going to slap a little little atomic engine, nerve atomic motor. Uh, despite the big scary trefoil painted on the side of this engine, its radioactive exhaust and tendency to overheat, the LV-N atomic rocket motor is harmless, mostly. Note that the LVN is the only LV series engine run solely on liquid fuel. The future is going bright. Oh, okay. Good, good. Atomic rocket motors. That's always good. So we, what do we need now? We need a stage separator, I want to believe. Uh, I want to think. No, not a decoupler. I don't know. It's, it's been a long, long time since I played this game. Uh, so... There's two sizes to things. And we kind of, we're kind of going to want the big one, I think. Yeah. Stack separator. 
So this means everything we put below this point will explode once we, uh, well, hit the old button. And because it's massive, we can actually go ahead and... Oh, wait, you know what? Hold on. We have to get rid of that because we need fuel. Our engine's not going to do anything without fuel. So we need a... No, that's the odd-shaped one. We need just regular old... How much fuel? 50? 400? 800? Yeah, but we don't need ovated fuel tanks here. 2,700. That's huge. Yeah, we don't need... I don't need one that big. What about this one? That's that's way too big. That's like hilariously big. How about, how about this one? Is, ooh, yeah, that'll work. Now that's a lot of fuel to get to the mud. That's probably like way, way more fuel than we need, but boy howdy, we're gonna we're gonna use it. Oh, you know what? And what we really need. Not that. Nope. There we go. Set that to the side for a minute. We're going to need RCS fuel. Um, and RCS is uh, like a propellant based fuel system that you can use to have little jets kind of orient you out in space. You know, you have a big giant thruster in the back of your, your rocket, but you need a little bit more of a fine detail than that when you're out in the middle of space floating around all crazy like. At least, I, I figure. I mean, you could not do that, I suppose. I'm trying to build a really quick ro rocket here. There we go. So now we have to move this up, because that's that's going to be our space-faring uh, stage. It's going to be our little rocket with a big giant fuel tank. Now, as you may uh, think, that's it's not really the most ideal setup for that, and unfortunately, you would uh, you would be right. But it's it's gonna be what it's gonna be. As I said, I'm not like an astrophysicist or anything like that. This is all half the fun for me for this game is knowing that it's hilariously difficult to shoot a rocket and have it land on another stellar body, right? I enjoy doing all this with the least amount of knowledge and uh, like scientific assistance possible. I just like to shoot stuff into space and see where it goes. Now that should be good enough for once we get into space. I guess it should be good enough to get us up into the uh, the old atmosphere Motron. Oh yeah, I forgot. We also duh, we need other stuff too. I'm getting ahead of the getting ahead of the game here. We need battery bank. Nope, not that one. No, not that one either. That's the spice. All right, so we got battery bank. We theoretically could take photovoltaic panels with us, but we don't need that. And uh, heat shield, yeah, I would say we take a heat shield, but again, we're not planning on actually landing, we're planning on crashing. So we can sidestep all of that. I don't think we need any of this. EVA jetpack, oh wow. I mean, I guess we'll take that, but what do I know? Okay, I think the... Wait, don't we need a reaction uh, reaction wheel or stabilizer wheel or something like that? No? Am I just cookies and cray cray? It's possible. Yeah, inline reaction wheel. There we go. So now we have our command cons or command uh, center. A battery bank, RCS fuel, and a reaction wheel. Not in that order that I moused over, because that's just not accurate. All right. Now we can go be building our lower stage here, which it's just going to be so big. Well, that's not big enough. We need bigger. That's pretty big. It's just not big enough. Let's see what we got here. 50... 3,000. Ooh, yeah, that's the spice. Ooh, 6,000. Ooh, the big chungo there. Alright. I mean, what could go wrong? A lot. A, a lot could go wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's bump this up a little more. And I 
guess we could go ahead and make another stage here. So this one will have a, another large engine. Thrust is about 1,000 kilonewtons. That should be good for a second stage, I want to say. 1,500, 1,000, 650. Yeah, let's just use the main sail. Okay. Now we put a stack decoupler in here somewhere. De decoupler, there we go. DD37. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, so that's stage two. That's gonna help us punch through the upper atmosphere. And now we need our, our maximum chungus for uh, getting us off the ground initially, because the more stages we have, the heavier it is, and the more thrust we need to get it off the ground initially. So, it's kind of like, you can keep building these things, but I've made many a rocket where you strap all these crazy amounts of fuel and boosters and um, it just ends up not doing anything because it's so absurdly heavy that it can't even get off the ground. We'll strap two of those. I think that's the biggest. No, no, we need these. We need the, the Kerbidine 1440. 14400, I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, we're gonna need we're gonna need two of them. Um yeah, we're gonna need two of them. That's just the way it is. That's how it's gotta be. Scroll back down, stack another one on here. We could put on our big maximum overdrive engine here. Boom, there we go. Quad rockets. Maximum thrust, 4,000 kilonewtons. I think that's the most we can achieve from a single piece. Yeah. All right, but that's still, that's going to not be enough. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it is what it is. So what we're going to do is strap a bunch of solid fuel boosters to this. And then that should give us enough to get us up into space. Yeah, look at that. All right, can I zoom out here? Yeah, let's zoom out a little. Get a better look at that. There we go. We put that down there. No, we should probably have it away from the, the heat. Oh, that's right. We can't just slap it on the side because they'll just fall off. We have to attach them with decouplers. I want to say... Yeah, radial decoupler. Oh, come on, radio radial decouplers. Go. So let's see. Kind of line everything up with our fins here. There we go. I think that looks good. I like the kind of uh, low-key jazz we get as we try and work our uh, work our way through remedial rocket science. Now, something I've always found to be difficult is actually getting the getting the booster to actually sit on the decoupler can be a little bit of a challenge because you want you you always want it. Uh, you know, as narrow, or rather, not narrow, but as close to the the decouplers as possible, without causing any kind of issues. Let's move it down here, maybe. Maybe that's a better spot for it. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I can live with that. And it's actually on the decouplers. How about that? So when we hit liftoff, we're going to fire the four solid boosters and maybe the uh, the inner engine. And then we'll shoot all of that away once we get high enough. We'll activate the mainsail engine. And that should get us where we need to be. Uh, theoretically, of course. 
Alright, I think... I think that's everything. Let's get a little bit more aerodynamics on this. Big ol' couple of, couple of delta wings here. And something to keep in mind is that when you lose a... start getting rid of sections, you have to remember that that's going to affect your aerod aerodynamics. Mm. So you don't want to, say, jettison a stage and then not have any uh, anything keeping you aerodynamically uh, in line. And now I'm pretty... I, I'm not up on the science on this, but I'm pretty sure having these fins here and these fins here is a bad idea, but... Well, I'm just chock full of bad ideas, so I'm not too worried about that. What I want, though, is... Yep, some RCS thrusters. We're gonna need them. Same, we need four up here. I'm probably gonna need a couple, uh... A couple down here, too, I'd wager. Because now the, the, the RCS thrusters won't do much in atmosphere, but they are more effective once you hit zero G. Alright, so it's aerodynamics. Let's cap off these. No, not that one. Oh, those are too big. Those are just right. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I've made crazier things, so, you know, it's all good here. Oh, that's way too big. What was that? How about this one? Boop. There we go. Look at that. Lovely. Alright. So now that we have a rocket uh, built, quote-unquote, we have to go and make sure our staging is correct. So, we have our solid boosters. Separator. Let's add... Let's add our main engine there in case the, like, I feel like the four solid boosters should be enough. So actually, yeah, let's, let's do that. So that way our four boosters fire once we hit ignition, once those run out, we'll hit the button again. That'll both decouple our first stage and activate our main booster. Okay. I think we're going to need all of them, but you never know until you go and pilot a thing what it's going to do. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to need this separate from that. Yep, we're going to fire all this, then decouple it, and then fire that. Now, I could have sworn... I have a decoupler on this, but I guess I don't. Yeah, I do. Lampatron docking port senior. I don't think that's the right thing to put on there. Let's uh, let's double check. That. <laughs> I'm pretty sure what we need is the stack separator. Yeah. I was wondering why there wasn't, uh, was getting an option for that there. Okay, so. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's get some stability in here for, so we don't crash on the ground. We're structural, there we go. Give me some of these, yeah, give me some of this. about there. That should hold it on the ground nice and tight. Just more or less. Actually, can we get a get a couple more on there just for the heck of it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now this is probably the least aerodynamically sound rocket ever built by mankind, but hey, we're going to we're going to go ahead and take it to the launch pad. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> 
So it could crash directly into the moon, of course. Ah, yes. Looking, looking totally safe and sound on every level whatsoever. <laughs> Alright, before we do that, let's find the moon. Hello, moon. Set as target. Turn our RCS. SAS on. Now... It's a good sign when you turn on the R the uh, the RCS thruster thrusters. They'll kind of function now that it's on. That they're not just constantly spitting out fuel, trying to keep the thing balanced before you start it. So, okay, let's uh, throttle up. All right, Jebediah back from the grave. We got Bill Kerman and Bob Kerbin. You're going. To where, well, let's be let's be honest. A lot of Kerbins have gone before, but you're you're going there. All right, here it is for the thousandth episode. Three, two, one, ignition. Oh no! <laughs> uh, Jebediah, Bob, Bill, uh, there's an issue happening. Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, activate the main thrust. Oh, no, the atomic engine's not good enough. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Let's uh go back to the vehicle assembly and try that one more time. So, clearly, one set of... Struts is not good enough there. Even though it is pretty much pretty much in the middle. I guess you gotta account for all the thrust coming from the bottom. But you know what? I don't have time to take all that off and do that. Or rather, I just don't feel like doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the least scientific thing possible. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just weld some struts on these to hold them together. <laughs> Which is definitely not what you should do with Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. All right, well, crap. Yeah, the game game got no idea what I was doing there. It's like, you were doing that, right? Like, yeah, sure, sure. Oh man, I gotta, gotta eyeball just that. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's all. That's all good. Let's try try this again. I think it's. I, I can't just keep doing it. I have to make more every time. Yeah. That's fine. Which, this is how this is how big rockets work. You just weld horizontal struts to them at like twenty foot lengths, and it's totally fine. <sighs> okay, um, let's actually let's bring this down a bit because we don't need it a uh, hundred feet off the ground. There we go. I think that might be too close, but hey, let's give it a try. Half the fun of Kerbal is just building ridiculously nonsensical spacefaring vessels and just blowing the ever-loving crap out of them directly under the launch pad. <laughs> Alright. Oh, you see that? Did you hear that noise? That was, uh... That's the RCS thrusters trying to keep us stable again. Alright, so let's, let's try it. Go for the gold. Oh yeah, that's working. Oh... Oh, we're, we're listing. Oh, we're listing pretty badly. This is not what you want in a spacecraft. <laughs> oh, E-Jack. Hit the boost. Let's do it. All right, well. Yeah, the atomic engine does not have a lot of thrust. Uh, it, it's very effective in space. Not so effective on the ground. Okay. We're getting this bad boy into space at the very least. I swear it. Alright, so let's just get rid of this. Clearly that's not working. We need a double set of struts at the at, at bare minimum. 
we cannot get by with uh, just one set of these. <laughs> All right, about there. That look good. Feel comfortable with that? I do. Yeah, look at that. That's that's totally gonna work. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh yeah, one of the things I did want to say while we're uh, kind of watching me putter around with trillions of dollars of worth of equipment, um, because this is the thousandth episode uh, uh, upload kind of deal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking the rest of the week off to try and just have a little time for myself and uh, get back into the swing of things proper next week. Uh, if you're a semi uh, daily viewer of this channel you know that the uploads kind of been very sporadic the last week and it's it's been kind of rough on me not not so much in like making the videos but just the the timing of everything doesn't work out very well i end up having to record stuff after you know working like a 10 11 hour day and then it has to uh, edit and upload overnight and sometimes things just go wrong so i'm trying to prevent that from happening these boosters are off center Oh well, that should be fine, I guess. Well, yeah, um, so there'll be no episodes for the rest of this week coming up, but I uh, expect, you know, get back into the swing of things with uh, Death Stranding and Dead Space and may or may not be the final episode of Fatal Frame 3. All right, this looks a little better. We've got the double, double struts. Uh, everything should kind of function now. So those will fire, then they'll decouple. Okay. And we clearly have enough thrust, so we shouldn't worry too much about uh, about anything nuts. So those are released, that'll fire. We separate, fire the main booster. Oh no. Yeah, say those, those gotta be down here with this one, or we'll have bad times. That'll fire, and then that'll separate. Yeah, all right. All or nothing. Here we go. This should at the very least get us to space. May not get to the moon. You can sit here and fine tune these vehicles. Why? Why why are you doing this to me? What is what is this? What is this? You know, I just want to see what happens. So yep, hit it. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that one's going to space. Oh, uh, no, I think that... That one might hit Kerbal Stan. Oh, no. All right, well... <laughs> that, that's just... That's fine. Why did the... Uh, I don't think the... I think maybe them being off-center really was a big issue. Oh, all right, well... Whatevers. Let's do a favor here and we'll spin this around so we're all on the same plane. We're on the same axe. Oh no, you gotta I need you to do that four times. Not once. Okay. Sometimes things just don't work out. try the maybe the flatter ones will be a, a better bet you know maybe maybe that's what we're missing here all right so right down the line one there and one there yes good now the only problem with using the slimmer ones is that it's even more hilariously difficult to find out whether or not you're actually on the correct one Yeah, see, that's just, that's just butted directly up against that. All right, let's... Nope. And it, it's, it's, it tries to fool you because, uh, as you can see, we're kind of on it there, but not really.
what we need to do is grab it like down by the bottom. No, that didn't work either. All right. And sometimes you're just you're just the yutz, and you can't actually uh, do it the way you want to do it. Such is life. Nope. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Let's let's just give it a try. And that's one of the things I always end up having trouble with in Kerbal is the uh, the the booster decouplers. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's not on there at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that works. All right. See, that see, it's like, oh, let's go with this different part. It's like, no, different part's just as bad. Different part is just as bad. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's go back to the the regular size one, I guess. There we go. That looks good. That looks good. Let's give that a launch and see what happens. Is it? Oh, it's just, it's just ripping them directly off of it. It's just not enough. What I want to know is why isn't it attaching to the bottom ones? Why? <laughs> it's just why. <laughs> All right, well that ain't gonna work. Hmm. Maybe it's just because I'm using the old setup. I, I don't know. Maybe the toggle snaps having something to do with it. I guess we could just have them a little lower. Maybe that'll work. I wonder, maybe it's just something I can just click here and. Oh, oh that wasn't right. Oh, I goofed. I, d I done goofed it. Looks like it might work. All right, let's try that. Oh crap! I didn't put the the girders on. That's gonna hit the ground really hard, isn't it? Yeah, see, it's it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> it's, it's all right. You know what? Clearly, the uh, our our issue here is the solid booster. So let's see if our just our big old big chungus can get us up there, and we'll skip this step. Maybe. Oh crap! That's the problem with rocket science. Sometimes simpler is easier. Yeah, see, the, the only problem with this is like, you see how these sections are thin? Like this is incredibly dangerous. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. This one's for all the marbles. We're not giving it another attempt. All right, three, two, one, ignition. 
I didn't, uh, I didn't reset the stage. Let's try that again. <laughs> that was, that one's on me directly for just not double checking things. It's almost like, it's almost like, uh, flying rockets is hard or something. I don't know. All right, so we got that. That'll fire. Okay, let's try this again. Throttle up. Let's hit it. I'm not really sure what exploded there, but it's probably not good. That wobble's not good either. Um, you know what? Let's just... Ah, we're fine. It's, it's all right. 50 meters per second. Now that's fast, but uh... You see the RCS thrusters desperately trying to keep us stable. <laughs> now the less fuel we have, the faster we're gonna go. But this wobble might snap us in half. In reality, it would snap us in half. Look at Jebediah. Bill is rightly terrified out of it, his mind. I love the... It used to just be more static images of them, like it would just kind of static in and out, and it'd be like a picture of them smiling. This you can actually see inside the cockpit. That's really cool. Well, we're getting there. 200 meters per second. We're cruising now. We've got a lot of atmosphere to get through, though. Oh, yeah. I should probably take this opportunity to lock onto the moon. Probably good. Our, our wiggle has uh, stabilized. That's good. Chewing through all kinds of fuel. Yeah, that's definitely not how you make a spacefaring rocket. <laughs> so now we actually, this is a good thing because we actually have to slow down. The higher up we go, we start punching faster and faster and we're hitting the atmosphere. And if you try and hit the atmosphere at speed, uh, you probably know what re-entry is, where you uh, ship from outside the atmosphere, comes into it, kind of heats up really dramatically. That's why we have heat shields. The same thing will also happen if you try and leave the atmosphere too fast. Now, thankfully, uh, in reality, we don't really have that trouble because we don't have anything that could, like, leave the Earth uh, so hilariously fast. At least I don't think so. Uh, it's, it's definitely more of a thing to worry about when you're coming back in than when you're leaving but we're almost through the atmosphere which is good which means we can actually kind of uh well let's go back to the map see how our apoapsis is doing here well thankfully we're actually kind of facing the right direction there's our there's our loop that's how much power we're generating now i forgot we're supposed to actually kind of point towards the 90 all right, there we go. We're out of... We're out of the atmosphere. We made it. We're in space. There's a launch pad way down there. Now, what do we want to do? We want to turn to the 90 degree... And hit thrusters to make our... To increase the size of our orbit, right? pretty sure that's what we what we're supposed to do okay so now if I do this we look back at this this should get bigger should actually kind of get bigger go get huge Uh, I don't think we're going to have enough fuel to get there. Because I'll be honest with you, there are systems in this game that'll let you do precise calculations as far as, like, correct burns and stuff like that to get directly where you need to. But again, like, the, I find a lot of the fun I have in this game is just seeing, like, okay, it's over there. How do I get there? I don't know. Let's try and figure it out. Oh, that's right. I'm a, I'm a doofus. What you're supposed to do is wait until you get to the peak of your orbit, and then you could widen it. I think? I don't know. Again, not a rocket scientist. And uh, I only have a kind of a base knowledge of physics. Now 
That should start throwing that out that way. Now there's no way we're gonna have, have enough fuel to do that, but at the very least, maybe we can get a full planet-wide orbit going. Cut it back and get back to the high point here. Got just a little bit of liquid fuel left. Oh, and our angle's off for some reason. Stupid intergalactic drift. Oh. Whoa, what happened? Oh, okay. Thought we died. No, we almost died. That's all right. Now, as you can see, we're full throttle, and we're just beating back our decaying orbit. So, looks like we're not going to be getting to the moon today. Because we can actually fast forward here. Oh, we can't fast forward while under acceleration. Okay. But with just an atomic rocket, we're not, uh... We're not going to be generating enough thrust to make this much better. You can see we're we're at a thousand meters per second, which is like fast. It's we're about Mach three now, but you know Mach three in space is it's all relative. It's not that fast. <laughs> all right. Well, that being said, there's nothing left to do. The pointing at the moon, which can be hard to orient sometimes. there at this rate but what we can do is we can throttle back and fast forward through time and watch our lovely descent back into Kerbal gravity makes sure what comes up and doesn't go up far enough comes down. Honestly, I just like shooting spaceships into the into space in this cave. Even if they don't make an orb an orbit, it's still fun. And we're back in Atmo here. Oh no, we're about to hit Atmo. Oh it's we're not surviving this. Our our fuel tank is fuel um the dump fuel no, d dump, dump fuel? Can I not dump fuel? Uh, well, that time has passed. You can see we're, we have no heat shield, so. We're, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, and that's it. So, as usual, that's all the time I have for this episode today. A sincere and sincere and honest thank you to everyone who's watched the videos over the last few years that have been making these. Uh, the videos will continue. No, uh, no intention to stop that anytime soon. Gonna take a week off though, and just kind of, uh, kind of relax and then enjoy a couple of days of free time. Um, we will be back with uh, Death Stranding on Monday and Tuesday next week. Hopefully, the end of Fatal Frame Three and the continuation of Dead Space. That being said, if you enjoyed the video today, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, get subscribed. Let me know down in the comments section below that about my gameplay, my commentary or anything else in general. That being said, thanks for watching, and as usual, I'll catch you all on the flip side.